From the City Skate Bar in the Holiday Inn Mart Plaza, Chicago, I'm Natasha Karecki and this is Off Message, our weekly political talk show. And with 2015 upon us, we are going to be looking forward at some of the biggest political stories that we think will happen in 2015. Um, so let's start with city elections. February, what do you predict? I think Ron will pull it out. I think he'll be elected on the first ballot. Right now it's looking like a runoff. Why do you say it looks like runoff now, but then you think that won't happen in the end? Uh, because I think people are mad at him, but uh, they start to look at the options, and um, I don't think they're very familiar with the options as they get familiar with them. I don't know. We're starting to scrutinize at least one of the candidates that got in the first place, and he's not quite as uh, progressive, I think, as he says he is. I'm talking about Fioretti. Mm -hmm. I think Chewy has never been up nearly up on this level in terms of a campaign. I think Graham is going to start uh, spending the money, too. So the union support has been going to Jesus Garcia. Sure. Um, some of it. Some of it. Um, and we've had Karen Lewis's endorsement. Are we going to see, is this going to help propel Garcia at all? Are we going to see more of Karen Lewis? I think, of course, it all depends on her health. And I noticed that she's going to be, she's scheduled to speak at the City Club, I think, in February, uh, which was, I was encouraged to see that. It would be good, good to see her out. I think he needs her out on the stump. He's not that well known. He's got some charisma, but he doesn't have, you know, he, he needs someone who could really be an introducer for him. And so, so she's really crucial. But, but of course, she's already been, been behind the scenes, I think, as an advisor and helping bring in some of the union money. So that's, that's the only reason why people are even taking him half seriously, because he's going to raise some so, money. So, you know, I, I find it in so interesting that, you know, these, some of these lesser known candidates are still trying to get their names out. But then we have Rahm Emanuel, who wow. is bombarding the city with ads already. Being able to have the tough conversations. And we're only going to see that go up because he has so much money. In the city of Chicago, can you win an election? on TV ads the same way as a, a statewide oh, candidate absolutely. could. Oh, absolutely. He did, he did once before. Right. That and being able to convey that Barack Obama had his arm around him. Yeah, that'll work. I honestly think that what these other candidates need is they need a commercial that catches fire and somehow makes a connection with people that they themselves haven't been able to make so far. I had thought that with Garcia it would it would be a Karen Lewis commercial at one point. Well, she did do a video commercial she did for do him. A she video. endorsed him. Yeah. I'm throwing my full support behind Jesus Chewy Garcia. But has anyone seen it? Uh, yeah, yeah I don't know anyone has I think seen it's it. only online, yeah. And so, you know, they got to get that out in some way. Well, the interesting thing about Rahm's commercials, too, is that, of course, he's not really featured in his own commercials. It's, it's really, you know, the city college's chancellor, a, a community activist, talking about how great Rahm has been for the city and what he's done for their issues. And he's been sort of in the background because, I think, because people don't like him. And so he's really pushing his issues and his message rather than himself. Remember, before it was Chicago for Rahm, now it's Rahm for Chicago. I work hard every day. Which is fascinating because one of the most effective ways of getting your message out on a political ad traditionally is having that candidate himself. So you mentioned Obama. Are we going to see Obama in town stumping for Rahm Emanuel? You know, I've got to believe he's going to try to do a little something for him. I think he still believes in Rahm and probably thinks he's done a good job for the city. I mean, Rahm does have a story to tell, as they say in politics. I mean, you know, he has done things and that's why he's doing, you know, these commercials where he uses other people to tell it for him because Apparently people don't much believe him. <laughs> <laughs> so the polls, the violence, the school closings, is any other candidate going to be able to tap into these, you know, this discontent that's been present and, and really use it against Rahm Yeah, Emanuel? the discontent is real. The obstacles for him are considerable. Chuy Garcia is probably the one that's the best situated to take advantage of the school closings just because he has Karen Lewis on his side. I think it remains to be seen how much she's able to get out there. I see her more on Twitter, where I really enjoy her uh, pithiness and her <laughs> commentaries on everything, right. including our stories, and we, we appreciate that. Yeah, and you know, the education issue, I think, is a prime ex example of how maybe Chuy Garcia has some work to do. His education platform, it was very thin. I mean, there were, you know, like, you know, seven or eight points about all these things he wants, all new resources he wants to throw at CPS, but no uh, explanation of where the money's going to come from. You just can't put a, a platform out that, li like that out this close to an election and expect to be taken seriously. Well, that worked for Bruce Rauner, didn't it? Bruce Rauner had about $59 million more than Chuy <laughs> Garcia is going to have. He's adopted some of the ideas that everybody wants him to adopt, uh, the people that are looking for an alternative to Ram, mm -hmm. on education and on crime. But how are you going to pay for it? And I don't know that that's been thought out yet by him and his campaign. Okay, let's turn to the state 
What are some of the biggest issues 2015 that you predict we will be seeing statewide Springfield? Oh God, we're still basically back with all the same old issues. We still have we've got to resolve the pension problem, you know, and we'll. That's really we'll, going to take center stage, though, isn't it? Yes, we'll have the Supreme Court weigh in on that this year. And but even before that, Bruce Rauner is going to have to advance a budget. What's he going to do about the income tax, right. or is he going to go with his service tax, or you know, is he just going to cut like hell? I don't really think anybody sitting here could say what for sure he's going to do, but there's going to be pain. There has to be. Well, he's, he said that himself. I mean, I think he's sending signals that there's going to be a lot of drastic change ahead. The financial hole is deep, deeper than uh, has been discussed. Well, he's setting us up for some big cuts, I think. For big cuts? For a tax increase? We don't know because he didn't present a breakdown of how he's going to do this, not even a vague breakdown really uh, at all. The speculation is rampant. I, I can imagine, again, purely speculating that there are huge parts of state government that he would find superfluous just in their <laughs> absolute role and much less the size that they've grown to even in their diminished state now. As far as taxes go, I'm sure he's hesitant to go there, but now he's in charge and he needs that money. So looking at predictions and looking at relationships, I'm, one of the things I'm looking forward to 2015 is the fascinating um, intertwining of Bruce Browner, John Cullerton, and Mike Madigan. Any predictions on how the Bruce Browner, Mike Madigan relationship might turn well, out? They well, they've had a nice chat or two, the three of them, and I think Madigan and Cullerton are going to have a very wait and see attitude. They're going to let Bruce Browner get out there and, and hang whatever he wants to hang out and then respond. I don't think that they're going to be giving him any help, especially around the, the budget issue. I think they'll help. I think they'll cut deals, but the trick will be that we've never, we've, it's been so long since we've had re, a situation where Republicans had to back the governor on things that are hard votes for Republicans, like raising taxes, or and for some, for many Republicans, it's very hard to cut uh, because you have to cut, uh, they, have, they have prisons, they have in, in their districts, they have universities. And so there's a lot of tough votes, and Mike Madigan and John Cullerton will make them put up their share of the votes on the tough, on the tough issues, and that may be where it falls apart for Bruce Rauner. I get the sense, too, that um, Madigan has indicated that he's willing to not do everything that the traditional Democratic constituencies, including labor, have wanted him to do. And I think he won't make it easy for Rauner. He'll use all his cards. But ultimately, um, I think that they'll be able to find some common ground. I think their essential approach is probably not that different. Do you think that Illinois is going to face a, a Wisconsin situation where we're going to see some significant changes with how we approach public sector unions in the state in 2015? I think we'll see that if, if Bruce Rauner figures out a way to do things administratively. I believe in Wisconsin, the legislature go along, and I don't think the legislature will go along on that. And so I think that part of what Rauner has up his sleeve is some like legal maneuvering. It's going to be fascinating to see what they are. I just, I don't know, <laughs> I've ne all for a year I've been waiting, where's he going? How's he going to do what he says he's going to do? And I still don't know. And do you think he hasn't uh, displayed his cards because he doesn't know? Well, we reported he's been pounding away for specifics, and even now, there's nothing. I, I mean, to the extent that someone thinks there's a secret Bruce Rauner plan? I don't know that there is. I think they're probably facing a lot of questions right now and, and scratching their heads and saying, oh my God. <laughs> I think he's probably got some ideas of what he wants to do. Right. Okay. right. There's a Bruce Rauner philosophy, don't we believe that he clearly has uh, some uh, inclinations based on his statements and his background in business. Uh, I don't think that uh, you look at who's supporting him and I don't think they'll be worried about cutting Right. State there payroll. won't be a, a progressive income tax, mm -hmm. and sure, um, there's certain philosophies, but it, it, when you get to the nitty gritty, I'm thinking that they're really uh, facing some uh, new territory there. We'll see what happens in 2015, and thank you to our guests. We will see you next year on Off Message.